<laughs> my metaphor for learning my lessons has been through skiing. I've always known that if I had the chance, I could inspire people through that means. It taught me two things. To find success, I needed a goal and a friend. You want to know the best part that I've found about giving a TEDx talk? <laughs> it's when it's over. <laughs> and I get to walk backstage and high five somebody and know that no matter if I botch this thing or if I knock it out of the park, I still get to go have ice cream with a friend. You want to know the best part about jumping off a cliff like this one? It's when it's over. <laughs> And I still get to high-five a friend at the bottom, and they can t maybe tell me something like, wow, dude, you should do that again. <laughs> and equally, at times like this, um, if there can be a good part, it is that friend. And usually that friend is mom or dad picking me up and telling me, it's OK. Go out there and do it again. And. My goal has always been to connect people to their magnificence through a shared experience. And the first experience of that and my greatest inspiration came at a young age, going to Warren Miller movies when I was young with my parents and watching how an entire crowd of strangers could be brought together with something that they related to on the screen. And that was the feeling of skiing pow. <laughs> And I knew I wanted to be part of that. And what I learned early on, though, is that if I was going to succeed at this, I had to be my own best friend. And mostly because people laughed at me and didn't think it was possible. So the way I would do it, extreme skiing, I would look up at the mountain in what would, most would call a pretty challenging arena and look and my first in instinct, if, if there was something that looked inspiring or exciting, I would take note of that. And right behind that, it was very subtle, but right behind that, the, the fear would come. And I would uh, let it come. All the potential consequences, the what ifs, the, um, the potential death even. And I would let that come. And then I would look back up at the mountain. And if that even hint of excitement was still there, I would go and do it. And that served me well. It worked very well. I won the tour my first year of competition. I won every contest I entered. I was on the cover of magazines and got cool sponsors. And even uh, in 2011, won Female Skier of the Year. But it also showed me and eventually caught up to me that I had one weakness. And that one weakness was that a long time earlier, I had adopted the idea that I would do anything but be called a girl. And because I had adopted that stereotype that girls were weak and emotional, and I wanted to be anything but that. Eventually, a big scary line came up, and I looked up at the mountain, and I tapped in, and I didn't see anything that looked fun and exciting and inspiring. It only looked scary. And in my intent to prove that I wasn't scared, I pushed through that. I pushed through my intuition. I pushed through my own best friend. And of course, eventually, I got hurt. And I got hurt again and again. This one was bad. Uh, and eventually, I had to learn that I had to listen to myself and listen back to that own intuition. And I forgot, I realized that I had forgotten that this was my love and this was the thing that I wanted to inspire the world with and this was my passion. And it was the grace and the flow and the beauty of it. And all of a sudden I realized that that was skiing like a girl. And accepting my intuition and expect, accepting feeling my fear and feeling all of those things was actually my power to reach my ultimate potential. So all of a sudden, I accepted that again. And I found my joy. I re reclaimed my art and started giving that to the world instead of playing somebody else's game. And Eventually, what, all I wanted to do was share what I had learned. And so I helped co-found SheJumps.org, 
which offers kids and women an opportunity to use the mountains and the outdoors as a metaphor to find their own magnificence and their own sense of belonging. And what we tell them is to have a goal and to lighten up on yourself, to be your own best friend, to listen to your intuition and accept all the parts of yourself, even the fear, even the parts that you might not think are your best friends. Because when we can all do that as a community, as a country, and as an entire society, we can truly be free. Thank you. <laughs>